Learn Michael Ben Pesach Portnar Baderech El Chasula On the way to the ladder. Lesson 11 Kabbalah is a study that has nothing to do with our earthly intellect. So, don't try to learn Kabbalah with your head. If you do so, you get tired. When learning at night, you overcome your physical body. It is impossible to become rich when you are asleep. This is also for the spiritual. When you stay in your bed, sleeping the whole night, your body will be the boss and everything what you learn stays in first grade. The body means the wish for to receive. I know that it looks illogical, but you have to go to battle with your own earthly intellect. If you don't want that your if you don't want that your body reign over you, you will notice that you don't get tired because tiredness comes through your intellect. Your intellect wants to stay the boss and doesn't want to surrender to the higher. The more you overcome your body, and that means the wish to receive, the less power it gets. Never, and I mean never, go in discussion with your intellect, the snake, because you will always lose that battle. Adam had lost this battle too, because he had tried to reason with his intellect. In every generation, the one who is debating with his intellect is the loser, although he had conquered the world. Keep this always in your mind. Your body consumes you and makes that you resign in who and what you are. But how many days do you have in this life? The ultimate goal in the learning of the Kabbalah is Gadlut. When you start learning Kabbalah, you have to be very cautious because you haven't the strength yet. There have been many things in your life, sins you had and have done, and there's nothing wrong in it if you start working at yourself now. In the whole universe, and here on earth, there are two persons who are in need of the same correction. Everyone has his own unique package. And again, in the whole universe, and here on earth, there are no two persons who are in the need of the same correction. So everyone has his own unique package. So be careful. You do less and less, but that doesn't bring you to the ultimate goal. Start to fear, to fear God, because this is a constructive fear. This fear tells you, do not receive egoistically. The ultimate goal is that you receive such strength and assurance from the inside that there is nothing and no one you have to be afraid for. You receive the wholeness and the eternal life, and nobody can disturb that. That is the ultimate goal. This is where you have to work at, but please be careful. In the spiritual, there is no competition. When you feel competition, then you're not busy with the spiritual. The only competition is in yourself. How can I give more? Everyone here in this group works as an individual. Everyone works for oneself, and through this we help each other. In this paragraph, we are discussing the five tough leaves that surround the lily. They form the masach, the strength that gives resistance, whereby the strength that reflects the light isn't present yet. Reflecting means that you have the strength to let something enter. And this is what is written. Five gates, etc., a cup of salvation, in the time of Gadlut, the large condition, whereby five tough leaves have become five gurot. Then they are considered as five gates, gates that are open to receive the five lights of mercy of the direct light. Then they are named salvations for this reason. Then the nukva is named, the name is always in agreement with the strengths in the spiritual and the true reality. The cup of salvations are a cup of blessings. Because by their power, the nukva becomes a kli. There is always the intention to make a kli, because only in this way the light can enter. Do not think, if I have the light, because that is only possible when you have a kli. The kli is the most important that can hold the blessings, which she is the blessing, the five lights of mercy, as mentioned above. The blessing arrives, but we can't hold on if we don't have a cup to receive. Please note, never think that the spiritual is difficult. 
The understanding doesn't matter. I'm speaking to your inner being, and your inner being reacts. The outer being wants to understand with the intellect, and that makes you tired with Kabbalah. Isn't tired. Me, for instance, I could continue the whole night. A little dose is enough. When you need more, know that you're on the, right, on the wrong path. Then you give yourself over at the death. And death is the goal of your body. The body wants to pleasure you. Remember this. This is the battle the Creator has destined for us, and everyone can overcome. I'm tired. I'm weak. I'm the most weakened of you, and all but the wish for life is enormous. Kabbalah gives us life. First, he had named the five tough leaves. Nukva had only one sphera, Keter, above in absolute. And the nine were fallen in the Bria. The next stage is, the Nukva grows in strength, and she gets five tough leaves. Masach, the strength to give resistance, for to withhold the light, when she hasn't enough strength, because the light may only enter when the light is sufficiently reflected. The strength of the five tough leaves increases, and the Nukva gets the strength to reflect the upcoming light, or Hasidim, of Zerampin. The upcoming of the reflecting light, whereby she reflects the Or Hasidim, which is surrounded by the Gvrot, enters the female side of Zerampin, and that she had brought up. And this he compares with the five gates. When Or Din descends, Or Hasidim ascends. The upcoming light enters. In a way, this is the building of gates, where through the light can enter. The Zohar tries to bring us the feeling of what the gates are. It is the strength of Malchut when she can reflect. At the five tough leaves, there's only resistance. There's strength in the Masach, but not enough to reflect. Instead of Ordin, light of severity, the reflecting light, or Choser, Zohar is speaking about these five gates. It is exactly the same, but in this way, he tries he tries us to give, a, to give us a feeling for what we're learning. The Tree of Life of Ari quotes the Zohar, but it only uses the direct language of the Kabbalah. Five gates, because now the Nukva is in Gadlut, the large condition. Now she can reflect the light and let it enter. Then there's the possibility for to experience the Ten Sefirot. And in Zohar, this is compared with the five gates, the reflecting light as five gates. We see this back in the temple service. Of course, people think there were sacrificed animals, but everything is spiritual. There was sacrificed an animal on the altar. What kind of an animal is that? It is the same as what we're doing during the night study. We lay our body at the altar. We get up in the night for to learn. And you can see this as if we bring our animal to the temple and sacrifice it. Because the animal in us wants to receive. This is our body. And that you put at the altar, the Malchut. The temple, of course, was also a place in Jerusalem. Directly behind the western wall, there was the altar. There were all the sacrificing, because that's the place on earth, also geographically, that agrees with all the sacrificing that was, is, and will be brought for the whole mankind. And not only for the Jewish people. In the lower world, the altar is Nukwa. The Nukwa that is above in the Absolute. Her nine bottom spherot can only, can only receive with effort by sacrificing and, by sacrificing descent. Every time you overcome the wish for to receive for yourself is to be seen as a sacrifice. In the temple there were two altars. One for the rough things, for special organs. There was an altar for the delicate things. Hezekiah had enormous prophecies written about the third temple, and Zohar will tell us step by step. When the organs from an animal were laid down at the altar and sprinkled with wine, special herbs, and special formulas, a cremation found place on a lower level. Then an overwhelming fire came that everything burned away. They knew how to do that because, of course, it came through the devotion of the people and not as a reaction on that meat. They knew how to surrender in a complete way. To open yourself, that is surrendering. And this we see at Nukva also. She made open her five gates, or Hoser. First, there has to go smoke from below. 
to above, before a fire from above appears. Hasidim. The light of Din, the heavy strength makes gates wherein comes the light of Hasidim, mercy, and that makes it sweet. Lovely odors from the great man, that is the Zet. That, that is the Ze'ah, Ze'rampin. And we can find the altar only on the earth, but as a strength it agrees with the Nukva of Atzalut. In Atzalut we can find the control system of Nukva and Ze'ah. In her large condition, Nukva brings Din, severity up high, and by that she is suitable to let enter the Ze'ah, or Hasidim. When there was a sacrificing ceremony, all the people kneeled because everyone felt the Divine Presence. With their healthy, with their earthly intellect, they came to the temple. They wanted forgiveness, the feeling from inside to be whole, shalem, and to experience eternity, and not only misery, severity. It is in our hands if we receive the positive strength of mercy. First, Zayrampin gives five Hasidim, which enters the gates of Nukwa, and then a shining of Chokhmah arrives. Without Chokhmah, Nukwa can't have pleasure. It is the same for our world. A man has, of course, a female and a male side in himself, and he has to bring up the strength, so too the woman, and together they give with mercy a little piece of chokmah. Not his chokmah, but from Bina, he only passes it through. Five gates. The fourth sentence. Gates that are open to receive the five lights of Hasidim, Ze'ah. And the whole temple ceremony had everything to do with communication, interaction between the human being and the Creator, whereby the Creator is nothing more than the strength of Ze'ah, Ze'rampin. It is to us to cause the right reaction, and inevitably we will get an answer, and saving in every situation. Every time we have to overcome, I don't give you false hope, or that you may think it may come by tricks or whatever. A few weeks ago, a reporter called me and he asked me if I wanted to give an interview for an exhibition. I told him that I don't give interviews. But a few days later, he phoned me again and I told him to go to our site. And again he called me. And I liked it when one is persuasive. I didn't give an interview because everything that he wanted to know he could find at our site. But I have helped him a little. He asked me, what do you think about the case in his eye? There was a Kabbalist who had taken an amount of money for to cure someone of cancer. What is your opinion? I don't read papers anymore. I'm not interested in what a person does in this world. I told him this had nothing to do with Kabbalah. It is up to you to avoid cancer. For everything you do, you have to make an account. It's not an eye for an eye, but you have to overcome yourself. Do not work with ideas of this time. When someone works at oneself, there were Kabbalists who had diseases too, but it is different. They did that as a sacrifice for other people. A very great righteous person can be sacrificed for another person, and he wants to do this very much. Look to our saints. They always say, in Eni, here I am. Yosef too said, here I am. Why? Because when someone has come to such a level, he can't refuse. What is the opposite? Sometimes it is better to give a life than to ask constantly, what kind of life is this? But you have to work slowly. Through the sacrificing ceremony, they came in the condition of Gadlut. People came to the temple and felt relieved, because afterwards they felt the Divine Presence. We don't have to go to a temple. We can experience this more often in our little room under the attic. The place is not important. With the right intention, it is as if you were in the temple. Just as Nukva, you have opened the gates through Orchazar, and by that the light can enter. Everything is in our hands, but you have to do it. Not everyone has to follow the night study, but it is good to overcome your intellect, and at least once a week try to get up and learn, and you will see it will give you salvation. First, the Nukva was only one Sfira surrounded by five strengths that were not awakened. Now we compare the Nukva with a cup, and five fingers with Or Hoser. In the cup, the light Hasidim enters. Everything comes from the Absolute. Via Yesod of Zerampin, it goes to the Nukwa. The Yesod of a person enters the female organ. When she is capable to receive the Gadlut, then she can pass it through to all the worlds, at Bria, Yetzara, Asiya, and the person who is living there. The whole meaning of this is that it goes to the creation, and the creation is the human being. 
Malchut receives, and she gives it to us. Of course, there will be questions. When everything is at Malchut to give it us, why don't we experience? Why don't we feel she is giving it us? Because we do not have the same qualities as she has. We only want to receive for ourselves, and that makes it impossible. This is the law. You may believe me or not, when there is a receiving for yourself, it is deemed to failure. You can compare this with a hole in you. All the blessings come to you, but it goes right through you, and you have felt nothing. When the nukva is capable to bring up the five gurot, five fingers form the five gates. You can compare this with a cup standing at five fingers. These five fingers hold the cup upright, so that there can be a receiving. Through this image, you can get a feeling what it is all about. In the tree of life, it is written absolutely differently. We will learn step by step. The tree of life is much higher than the Zohar. Zohar is a transmission between the higher and the lower, and the tree of life is pure light. The tree of life also comes from the Zohar. It was given at Ari, from above. He could see the light, the operational system, and take it out, while we see in Zohar all kinds of things, like the lily, etc. We have to work. There is nothing free in this world. The intellectual person says it is complicated. He doesn't want to work at himself. He'd rather take a pill. I have stopped to give people advice. They wanted to give me so much money if I let miracles happen. And that has absolutely nothing to do with Kabbalah. There is written, it is not allowed to help someone who is not worth to be helped. When someone has a wrong way of life and you are helping him and you tell him once, twice, three times, then you have to let him go so he can undergo the misery that will help him instead of come to me because in this way you are corrupting the world. When someone wants to bless you in a church or in a synagogue, you have to flee away. It is all wishful thinking and it only makes you weak. Can you make a confession for someone who is just as uncorrected as you? Only for the Creator you can make a confession. When you do this for a person, you deny the con- you, you deny the connection of the Creator. You will receive punishment by your own wrong attitude. If you believe an amulet or water can be sacred, can be of help, you're wrong. Then you're still a child. Even the nukva, one can grow only according to strength. In every new situation, there are under the thorns. It is not difficult, but you have to learn to surrender. This is where you have to occupy yourself. Your intellect makes you tired. Of course, there's limitation. You're inside your skin, and that that feels safe. Try to conquer your intellect. That is the enemy, number one. He is your enemy because the intellect is difficult to overcome. The moment you have conquered it will help you. Your intellect is a small mechanism that only can help, well, can, that can only help you in striving for the higher, and no more. Because you have still a shortcoming, the intellect rules over you. It has to compensate what you lack inside. You don't work at yourself. You don't want to see the reality, and then the intellect takes the system over. For example, you go to a party with your wife, and she's talking with someone, and you're drinking. One drink after the other, and you get drunk. What does your wife say? You go in the passenger seat, I drive. And that is what you're doing in the real life, too. You let your female side, the intellect steer. Many of us think that the intellect is as a male side, but they are absolutely wrong. If your wishes, there is your strength, there is 90% of our strength, and this enormous creativity we let unattached. The intellect is good for 1% or 2%. All the gadgets nowadays, mobiles, space, etc., very nice, but it is only good for these 2%. And the 98% is unattached because you don't want to be involved with the eternal. And see here the number of sfirot, that there are two aspects. For the number is ten, which is five of them are principal as mentioned above, or they can be in the number of thirteen, as there are thirteen qualities of mercy. Of course, always five or ten, but there is something of thirteen and a two, like the thirteen qualities of mercy. And the difference between ten and thirteen, that the number ten teaches us about the Sfirot Zon, Zerampin and Nukva, that they have only or Hasidim in their selves. And then we speak of ten Sfirot. It is all about the how and what, and not the why. 
Do you still remember? And the number 13 teaches us about Mohin. Mohin is a kind of light within the Zerampin and Malchut. And when it is higher in Bina and Chokma, then we speak about light. Then it is lower in Zerampin and Malchut, we speak about Mohin. Moach is brains. In man, the brains is higher too. Everything comes from the brains, but how we use it, that is another story. When we speak about the 13, we speak about the Gadlut, whereby not only horse or Hasidim is received, but also a sparkle of Chokmah. And that brings wholeness. Not only mercy or only Chokmah, the left side, we can't experience the pure Chokmah. When we're making the line in the middle, and the Zohar will learn us how, a sparkle, a spark of Chokmah is in the Or Hasidim, because when it arrives at Zerampin and the Nukva, then there is already a shining in it. At the higher, Keter and Chokmah, there is the real Chokmah, because the higher can comprehend more. For a child, you make the lemonade drinkable with water. You don't give it to the child in the concentrate form. We as mankind also have to learn to prefer a sparkle of Chokmah above the heavy Chokmah, and that will give us a hangover. It is not made in the system that we receive in the pure form. We will learn what it is all about, and then we know how to react. Yesterday, during the night lessons, we were talking about, it was evening, it was morning, one day. You can find the whole Kabbalah in this sentence. Darkness is a structural part of light. Both make a day. This has a person to learn by heart. All comprehensions are in this way. First there is darkness, and then it becomes light. Do not be afraid for depressiveness. Do not flee from one of those two strengths. Only you can change yourself. With the shining of Chokhmah that is received by the Zon, what is the drinking of a kosher, or what is the drinking at a kosher way, and what is drinking in an egoistic and foolish way? When you come somewhere and they are giving you whiskey and cookies, how do you handle this? When first you take a couple of whiskeys, you take or Chokhmah pure. That will give you a hangover. So what is the best way to do this? First you take the cookie, drench it in the whiskey, and then you eat the cookie. The food goes for the drinking. The food is as or chasidim, light of mercy. And therein are drops of alcohol, or chokmah, a sparkle of chokmah. When you drink alcohol, drink it during dinner. Whatever your culture may be, this is according to the laws of the universe. If you act another way, you take first the or chaser, and afterwards you take the or chasidim, it is not a good way. It has to go together always. It is all about the principle and not about culture. Do not take in the light immediately. Eat, and the side effect is the drinking. Nukva receives only a sparkle of Chokmah, and we, as a product of Zeram, Pin, and Nukva, are not capable to receive pure Chokmah. If we do it otherwise, then we step into the footsteps of Adam and of Cain and Avel by drawing the light from above to below. This can only happen without a hangover when you are in the middle line, whereby the Hasidim the cookie is drenched in the alcohol. When you have more strength, you can drench the cookie a bit longer. Eating is higher than drinking. And then we have Yain Mesameach, wine that brings us pleasure. Yain Meshaker is wine that makes you drunk. When you are working with the spiritual, it isn't suitable to drink. Of course, drinking is social and pleasurable, but there is less and less need for alcohol. The needed alcohol comes from all the overreacted situations. When you don't have control over a situation and you want to relax, your body says, take a drink, because then you get drowsy and tired. And the whole purpose is that we do not feel any tiredness, that we overcome our body. This is given to anyone. Everyone who is sitting here has the potential in oneself to free him or herself of tiredness. Of course, you have to do some physical work, and then you are in need of a short rest. But when someone knows how to practice his job, there were house painters at work, and one of them, a young lad, with a lot of power. If he was fighting with a sword and smoking cigarettes and yelling while his older colleague was painting, if he was Rembrandt, he didn't get tired. When you get tired, you give yourself over at the bad inclination. Remember this. A human is not made to be tired. 
when you're working in a fabric, of course, they want to exploit you. But don't let yourself be rushed. Each moment you get rushed, the bad inclination has influence at you because a human being is not made to be tired. Through Kabbalah, you will start to feel the inner being, and that makes you less tired. You can do more and more, and you will receive more clarity. And this subject about the numbers 10 and 13 will be explained in Mamarot HaSulam. At the next page below, there starts an extra commentary of Sulam that is named Mamarot HaSulam, the vision of Sulam. There he will teach us the principles of the Kabbalah. These are principles are the highest, higher than mathematics and physics, even higher than Einstein and other Nobel Prize winners will use and invent till the coming of the Moshiach, the Messiah. And at that time, or at, and at the same time, it is simple. How is this possible? For Kabbalah, you must have a feeling. There is nothing to remember in the Zohar. The task is to make yourself receptive, and that is all and you will never be tired. This is the only thing you have to remember. When you are tired, adultery, adulterous thoughts of overdone wishes will come to you. Are you the boss over all these thoughts? Of course not. They come and they go. You must recognize them directly, not put them away nor react in them. Then you will not become tired. It is simple, but you have to be careful. Step by step, a system is building up in you, and the thirteen qualities of mercy will surround you, and they will not allow that you will be sucked. What is sucking? You are looking out of the window. Your mouth goes open, and you are continuing staring out of the window. Or you are watching television, and something takes your attention. Know that everything on the television is there to get you. Absolutely. Everything is pointed at one point, to take your attention, even when you are walking in the street. Always you have to be careful, be aware, don't let yourself be sucked. Everything is up to you. <clears throat> and he, the Zohar, says, the cup of blessings learns us or teaches us about the attraction of five Hasidim within the five Gurot of her, from the Nukwa, as mentioned above. Last time, we have said the own strength of Nukwa is Gurot, Din. That's why she is in need of Hasidim, mercy. She needs Zerampin for to sweeten her Gurot. That makes it bearable for her to receive the light. And he says the cup of bracha, blessings, represents the cup with the blessings. That what comes in the cup. Wine gives us blessing. Chasadim. That gives us bracha. This is not everything. It is only the first step of Gadlut, her large condition. There is already the receiving of chasadim. Nukva already has five tough leaves. She has the strength to reflect the light. That's why everyone wants to receive blessings that mean one is not in misery. You have the feeling from above if there is some relief. In the original text, it is written in bold letters, which is the text of the Zohar itself and continuing on, the cup of blessing, in the former paragraph. When I have a cup resting at my five fingers, my five fingers are grot. The reaction of Nukwa in the cup, that is the Nukwa, there enters the light Hasidim, and that is named Bracha, blessing. And it is named blessing because it gives her life. She doesn't stay in the condition of severity. That is to say, only in the number ten. Five fingers is five gurot, reflecting strengths. And therein comes the corresponding five lights of Hasidim from Ze'ah, Ze'rampin. That's why it is only ten sferot. When we're speaking of ten sferot, it means there is only the light of Hasidim. And when we're talking about the thirteen qualities of mercy, we speak about Gadlut, whereby not only the Hasidim enters, but also the Nukva descends and the Hasidim receive Or Chokmah. That is a higher condition, whereby all the thirteen qualities of Rachamim, mercy, surround her. Surrounding because she can't yet receive them in herself. She is already steady, but it has to be gathered too. A birth in the hand is worth a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. It is better to receive one sfirah keter than nothing. This bird you put in a cage in the garden and you take care of it, and later and later other birds will visit her, and she tells us how wonderful she feels herself. 
and slowly, one after the other will come. So you see, you have to start with one. These are Hagat and Nam. Netzach, Ihod. When we are speaking about five, Sfirot in the head, Rosh, we are talking about Keter, Chokmah, Bina, Zerampin, and Malchut. When we are speaking over the Hasidim, about the body, the ten Sfirot, or about something that can only receive Hasidim, we are talking about Hesed, Guvra, Tiferet, Netzah, and Hod. When there is only Hasidim, then Keter, Chokmah, and Bina sink and they become Hesed, Gubra, and Tiferet. Netzach is Zerampin and Hod is Malchut. As mentioned above, and not more than ten or five Sfirot. At Hasidim, we are always speaking of five. That is to say, in contrast with the number thirteen. Everything is ten, and now suddenly it says thirteen. And the reason is that Nukva isn't capable. Hasidim without Chokhmah isn't sufficient. It doesn't give fulfillment. Why does receive only five or ten? To receive Chokhmah in the secret of thirteen, she hasn't yet the strength. Only when Nukva has thirteen, she can receive the Chokhmah. I repeat, learn. Learn the how and what and not the why. The answers and the why questions you will receive from above. Your whys, your questions are your kelim. Not your intellect has to ask for the why questions, but it has to come from your incapacity to experience. That's your why without any definition. From the inside, there are the entire whys, and all these whys will get an answer, but do not try to understand with your intellect. Your intellect has only a small capacity, 2% for to take care of that we don't burn our fingers or jump out of a window, and etc. All scientists use only these 2%. Of course, it is given from above, but it is not the salvation. When we say that something isn't suitable, then we mean it hasn't enough strength yet. Each person is capable to receive the full salvation, regardless of his origin or culture, regardless of his intellect, given at his birth. Everyone can come to fulfillment. He is only not yet suitable because he hasn't worked at himself. She isn't suitable to receive the Chokmah, Chokmah in the sense of 13, without the covering of Chokmah in Hasidim, without the penetrating of Chokmah in the Hasidim. How can it penetrate? Chokmah is heavier light than Hasidim. Chokmah comes from Keter. Chokmah Bina, it is thinner, and Hasidim light of Zeah. Chokhmah always enters because everything that is higher can penetrate the lower. When the Chokhmah in her enters slowly, dependent on her strength, she experiences the thirteen qualities of mercy from the Creator. Everything is in our hands to experience the eternal, the love of the Creator, and not to be tired, etc. This is only possible when we make ourselves receptive, that we first receive Hasidim, and that means blessing. And then you can come to Gadlut the large condition, wherein the Hasidim can receive Chokmah. Not pure Chokmah, just as a person drinks vodka. He tosses down a few vodkas and he sits straight. And that is not by his inner work, but what was in his glass. In my younger years, I went to parties, and after 37 minutes, I left. I knew that the coziness was at its top. And they would hug, but after three minutes, it would change. And then there would be a fight. Try to do this in every situation. Know that if you receive more than you can handle, it will change into evil, to the experience of dinim and other things. That's the time to leave and do not listen what others want to tell you, their misery, etc. You must flee away. Let others do that. There are people who get a kick out of listening to misery of other people. It is also about the weather or about the partner or whatever. It's an endless sequence. It is in our character. There's a shortcoming, and the subject doesn't matter because a person can talk about anything. From the inside, there are not yet kilim for the blessing, for to receive the Hasidim. And you have to seek for the Hasidim. And as a consequence of your quest, there will come a little chokmah. In the large connection, or in the large condition, you will see that there is no tiredness. Only then. It is that sparkle of chokmah that enters you 
and breaks the resistance in your body. Look at the night study. I don't want to plead for the night study. Everyone has to make his own decision. But the aim of the night study is to break the laws of gravity and not to destroy them, but to break through because the laws of gravity and the physical feeling are both from the Creator. We have to stand up in the night to break through the gravity. Every new morning again and again, and then you can come to a breakthrough and another breakthrough, and then there comes a morning, and you stand up at 3 o'clock dancing because you have made it. And after two hours study, you feel step by step the light chokhmah is penetrating you. Then you are in the, then you are in the gadlut, and you go to your work or you go home and lie down for a few minutes. It is sufficient. There is a little surrendering, and you make a credit what is given to you from above during the night. When you don't follow the night study, try to learn an hour or something of practical Kabbalah and an hour Zohar, but you have to stand up during that time. The whole meaning is that you break through the laws of gravity in yourself. Because those exist, you have the strength to break through and then you receive Hasidim with a sparkle of Chokmah. And slowly it will stay with you. You can wake it up and every morning, at every moment, just as if you make a phone call. You will feel where it is inside of you. You can call it each moment. That is how I don't... The how... I don't teach. I don't teach at you because you have to feel it for yourself. What is your personal relationship with the Creator? This is only, there's only one Creator, but everyone has his own experience and relationship with the Creator. I can't tell you, do as I have done. That would be foolish. There are no two persons the same, and everyone to make his own correction. I don't tell you a thing about mine. There's no point in it. I only give you the Zohar, the operational system, and you have to practice it. Can you imagine how personal it all is? Adi tells us that there is not one day the same. The creation you did today is for today, and tomorrow you have to do another one. The correction I do is never the same as the correction you do. There is no righteous that looks at another righteous, no saint that looks at another saint. So when you attach yourself at a saint or rabbi, never attach yourself to nobody. You may, of course, have some respect for what we do for the Creator, but never follow me. There is not a word from or about myself, only you, and not a group. This is the only thing you have to remember. All other things are comedy. And from that point, one has to draw the blessing. A blessing doesn't appear as lightning in the clear sky. Through your inner work, you can draw the blessing. Hasidim as a preparation for the large condition. That is the five Hasidim, which is the blessing through the way of our five fingers. When someone bless the wine, he has to put the cup at his five fingers and think what it's all about. At that moment, he draws the Hasidim and he makes effort to uplift the five Gurot and then Hasidim can come in the cup. The Hasidim is as diluted wine, and when the Chochmah is there too, it becomes stronger. Therefore, it is necessary first to draw on the blessing. They are five Hasidim just by five fingers. These five Gurot are five fingers. Why do we need the blessing? Because we feel from the inside din, severity. And it is not the meaning that we stay in severity, which is not the true reality. Every time we make consideration, shall I do this, shall I do that, is severity. And that we bring as a sacrifice up high and ask for help. And then Hasidim will come. Our severity will be sweetened, healed. In other words, we bring some balsam in our wounds. And that makes it bearable and gives us life. And only then she is Nukva, capable to receive from the thirteen. First she receives from the ten that are five Hasidim. Mercy is only a preparation. Therefore it wasn't enough for the chosen nation to lead for mercy and announce this is the most important principle of the Creator. Because mercy will never be the goal of the creation and the service of the Creator. Of course this was necessary in history for the most non-Jewish people to announce the mercy, but not. But now, in this time, we are ready to see that there are two strengths in the universe, and they are both structural, and now we are ready to receive some chokmah, 
and not only mercy, because the human being can't live only with mercy. There has to be a shining of chokhmah in us too. That makes a person can come to fulfillment. Until the next lesson, all the best.